I'm going to give this to someone who did many years of service in our community. That's Sahadev. Sahadev. Just stay right there. <laughs> stay right there. See if I can. I never was very good at basketball. <laughs> okay, so let's just get our beads out, okay? Just spend three minutes chanting on the beads. <clears throat> and we'll do this, uh, you know, in unison. And uh, this is a way to purify our existence. We're asking everyone to, um, maybe you should turn off the lights. I know we've done this before. Can you turn off the lights for a moment? Who knows everything? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so everyone knows Hare, Hare. Krishna. Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 
Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much. Sorry. And now we'll proceed with a verse. From the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, uh, Prabhuji, which verse 16. was it? 16. Okay, great. We can use a little bit of light now. How's everybody doing? Great. Uh, good. <clears throat> so this chapter is entitled The Most Confidential Knowledge, mm -hmm. and I'll give you it in Sanskrit, and then we'll go for the English translation and purport or explanation. <coughs> Aham kraptur aham yagya Swadhanam aham aushadam Mantroham aham evajam Aham agnir aham hutam Translation It is I who am the ritual I, the sacrifice The offering to the ancestor The healing herb The transcendental chant I am the butter and I am the fire and the offering. Please repeat. But it is I who am the ritual. I the sacrifice. The offering to the ancestors. The healing her. The transcendental chant. I am the butter. I am the butter. And the fire. And the fire. And the offering. And the offering. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. Srila Prabhupada Ki. The Vedic sacrifice known as Jyotishtoma is also <coughs> Krishna. And he is also the Mahayagya mentioned in the Smriti. The ablations offered to the Pitriloka or the sacrifice performed to please the Pitri Loka, considered as a kind of drug in the form of clarified butter, is also Krishna. The mantras chanted in this connection are also 
and many other commodities made with milk products for offering of the sacrifice are also Krishna. The fire is also Krishna because fire is one of the five material elements and is there for claimed as the separated energy of Krishna. In other words, the Vedic sacrifices recommended in the Karmakanda division of the Vedas are in total also Krishna. Or, in other words, those who are engaged in rendering devotional service unto are to be understood to have performed all the sacrifices recommended in the Vedas. Jai. Namo Om Shivarai Krishna Shtai Vatari Sarimate Bhakti Vidana Swamini Namani Namaste Isale Swate Devi Gauravani Pracharini Niravishi Shashanyavani Vasjatari Shadarini So some of you who may have are not so familiar with these terminologies or who may come for the first time or you may not understand everything that's going on here. First of all, this verse is spoken by Krishna. And who is Krishna? Well, he's the Adi Guru, the first teacher in the science of life. And uh, in this chapter, 9, which is halfway into the whole text, is describing different kinds of sacrifices. One sacrifice is to chant. Um, that means, always chant. Chant as much as you can. Chant in the temple, chant on the bus, chant off the bus. Some people might, in the office, they might think you're crazy. But um, just ask everyone, anyone who has an objection, why don't you just try it and see what it's like. So chanting is a form of sacrifice. Sacrifice is a willingness to, you know, give to give. Um, two days ago, I was in a branch of the United Church in Edmonton. And in their big hall, they have a message. And it's the message is written in English, three letters, give. Okay? Now give, the, the message isn't, uh, let's say, you give your donations to us. But rather, it's the generic term and overall understanding that we must give. We must sacrifice. We must not hoard, we must not keep everything for ourselves, but rather be in the mood of giving to others. It's actually a good practice and it's a good message. We had a nice turnout of people and they were very curious about Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> so in regards to some of the items that are listed in this verse, like rituals, everybody understands what a ritual is or a rite? You know, like a rite of passage, that's how it's commonly used. And people used to, you know, in most cultures in the world, they, they honored what was called rite of passage. That means, I'll give you an example. A boy goes and he enters into manhood by going through a rite of passage. In the Jewish tradition, they call it bar mitzvah, you know. And in the Vedic tradition, like our tradition, there's different things that you do too, some scars. And many other like more tribal cultures, they also have something you have to test. Like they'll give boy, here's a spear, go out there, get the lion. You know. And then if he kills the lion, if by some way, then it means he's entered into manhood. And then there's systems like that for the girls as well. It's it's a change, it's a transformation. It indicates growth. So rites are important, rituals are important, and in our community, people love rituals, right? They love them. Oh, well, let's go to the hovel. Ooh, you know, like it's, it's like going to the party. You know? <laughs> and people understand, I'm gonna get purified. And then there's, let's go puja. When is the RT? Most common question that comes through our telephone lines, you know? 
When is the arti? When is puja? When is darsha? Of course, you explain it to them. It's at such and such a time, and such and such a time, and such and such a time. But usually they ask a second time. What time is it again? <laughs> and then you have to tell them one more time. And they didn't, not every, all the information registered. So you have to say it a third time. Same thing with Ratiyatra. Is it true, Sahadeh Yes. When is the Ratiyatra? It's on such and such a day, such and such a route, and then we're going to have a feast at the end, blah, blah, prasadam. Okay, okay, okay. What day was it again? <laughs> so, ah, you know. <laughs> and that's like, <clears throat> just to hear me the first time. So um, rituals are important. People get excited about them. And uh, the sacrifice, Krishna says, I am the ritual, I am the sacrifice. There's no difference between the darshan of the deities, you know, and Krishna himself. There's no difference between any sacrifice you render in Krishna. We say that. Naman chintamani krishnas chintamani bigra. That means that when you chant Krishna's name, the name, God is in the name. You know, there's no difference. There's no separation. You know? uh, offering to the ancestors. We have terms like pinda. You know, it's boga. You offer it to the ancestors at the time of shraddh. I had somebody asking me that the other day. Do you have any, do you have anything for the ancestors? Yeah, it was one woman I gave diksha to. She's from South Africa. And in her tradition, where she comes from, uh, there's a very strong emphasis on ancestral worship. She asked, do we have anything like that? And the Vedas have said, oh yes, there is something. You know? And I explained to her, Krishna wakes up in the morning and he meditates. And he takes a bath, he meditates after, and then he spends a little time meditating on the ancestors you know, and other personalities, divine personalities. It, it, it's just taking a few minutes of appreciation to the persons that have given you something. So there's something there about offering to the ancestors. And then we, we call it shrad, right? That's when uh, you, and we have that in our tradition. You can, Look it up in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, the followers of Chaitanya honor this. You know. They honor this. And then, like, I, I have some friends there in Burlington, Peru. We have a Burlington, Burlington connection here, right? Washington. Washington? No, Burlington. <laughs> no, Burlington, Ontario. We have a Burlington connection, right? So I have some family. They always come and they always give me. Uh, the latest uh, uh, um, sweatpants, so I can run when it's muddy or rainy. <laughs> so they, and they want to give to some like Brahmins, and they consider that's the thing that they must do in order to gain purification. Okay, the healing herb. There are a lot of things out there that heal us. Probably that plant that was here and vanished in the thin air just a few minutes ago. That was probably a healing herb. Is that right? Was that basil? Oh, basil. How many people love basil? So do I. Pesto. Okay, basil is great. And in the basil family, we have Tulsi Devi, you know, very much honored in our tradition. So we understand that Krishna is a healing herb, plants that heal you. Forget about poison ivy, I guess. <laughs> the transcendental chant, we talked about that. I'm the butter. Now, I was just a month and a half ago, I went to Tirupati in India, and then I came back, and uh, where did we stop? Just trying to think where we stopped. I just can't remember. Too many flights. And uh, so then I landed at the Toronto airport, and it was such a long lineup. So finally, I got to the security. And it was a young woman. She was short. She was Caucasian, blonde hair, blue eyes. I said, where are you coming from? She had her suit, you know, looking like formal. Where are you coming from? And I said, I'm coming from India. Are you bringing anything in from India? I said, no, I'm not bringing anything. Are you sure you're not bringing in some ghee? <laughs> so how did you know about ghee? <laughs> ghee is clarified butter, you know? And so, you know, I guess they're doing their homework when they get trained as security to know, you know, what's coming in from other countries, you know? So, uh, so uh, Krishna says, I'm the butter, 
And of course, we know him to be the butter thief. You know, when he was young, and he can be excused because he's just a ju less than a juvenile, ju super junior. Uh, but uh, he's uh, nevertheless, he has strong connections with butter. And of course, it's a hinks of butter. And then he says, I'm the fire. Uh, fire is one of the pure elements that you can see does amazing things. Fire cleans, you know. Farmers know. I remember when I was a kid growing up in southwestern Ontario, and in the fall, you didn't put leaves in paper bags. Come on. You know? <laughs> no, what we did was, you know, what people did, they used, uh, you know, one of those rakes. <clears throat> a rake that goes, you know, not those beans <clears throat> where you have to, uh, those blowers all over the place, and they strip you to no end. It's, it's like being in a rock concert. You, you blow your eardrums out. Uh, but, um, so that you, you rake the leaves in a pile, and it wouldn't be a big pile, and you know, it was all deciduous leaves, and then you just start a little fire right there on the street. Yes. That's what you do. And people in India still do this. Farmers do it, and that's why Delhi is Delhi. I do not Everything lands in the city. <laughs> okay, so the Ramarpanam Brahmahavnir. Brahma Nai Brahmana Hutam. It's a shloka from the Bhagavad Gita that indicates that the person who is offering something to the Supreme Lord and um, the person who is on the receiving end, which is the Supreme Lord, and the object which is being offered are all Brahma. They do not take on the quality of spirit. Brahma. Brahma means spirit. We have two basic energies, right? Everybody's aware of that. Yes. We've called Prakriti, which in, uh, in Calgary takes the form of snow <laughs> for six months of the year. And then, um, then you, and that's Prakriti, this material energy. And then you have Brahman, which is spirit, you know? And of the two, Brahman is uh, of a greater magnitude. You know, it's vast, you know? It's, uh, it's everywhere. Brahman is everywhere. Sarabhakalavidam Brahman. Like Brahman is everywhere. It's in you. It's in you. It's in this phone. Brahman is in the plants. And definitely in the deity. And everywhere. In, Brahman is inside, outside, just everywhere. There is a manifestation of Brahman, which is spiritual energy, spiritual power. And so we are to identify Krishna as such. So when I walked across the U.S., there was a homeless man at the Jackson, this is called Jackson, California. And uh, he heard about my walking and I said, hey, it was like this, did you, you're walking across, you fin you're almost finished walking across the U.S., did you see God on your trip? You know? Did you see God? And I said, well, yes, I did. How did, what does he look like? What's it like? I said, well, God is to be understood in many shapes and forms. God is in the elements. God is in the trees. God is in the sound of the birds. God is, I hate to say it, but in the sound of the motor engines that go by you every day. But there is no place where God does not exist. God comes in some shape or form. And so a lot of people are like in the category of pantheists. They accept God in that, that, with that notion. Uh, not everybody is ready to accept God as a deity, you know, or God as a person. But that's a fun thing to talk to a group of Christians about. When I walked across America, I went to this one place that was, they took an old railway station and transformed it into a yoga studio. You know? And a lot of people came, and I was invited, because I was walking in that area, for the opening. And it was really wonderful. There were nuns in their habits, and they were dancing to our kirtan, the next, just like some of you were. You know, only they did better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they let me speak, and they wanted to know. They really, it was, they were dead, wanted to know, from our perspective, what is our concept of God? Is God an energy? Is God impersonal? Is God, because people hear all kinds of interesting theories now that are out there. And basically, I was able to say that 
God is a person. In fact, the supreme person. And I still see that I'm going, oh, oh, what a relief. Yeah. They want to hear that, that God is a person. <coughs> God is uh, someone that you can communicate with. And two days ago also at the United Church, they were interested to hear that God's a person. Whoa, that's nice, because you know, it's just not commonly expressed these days. This verse has a lot of power to it, and it really is a way to see God through what Brahmins do. Everything that we're talking about here is what Brahminical people do, or priestly people do. You know? They touch butter, they, touch, they involve themselves in chanting, they use herbs in their sacrifices, they use fire, is it not? Mm -hmm. And there may be some mention of ancestors, and, ulti and it is ult ultimately, the whole sacrifice is Krishna. That's the way we should be trying to see uh, how Krishna is in our lives. So sometimes we have difficulties. Sometimes. About all of the time. All of the time. And those difficulties should be registered as Krishna. How so? How are we supposed to see? The challenges that come before us are simply a way to um, read into Krishna's movement. Krishna's moving and he's concerned, he's caring. You say, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. And we have to try to catch it. You know? uh, sometimes it comes really hard. Sometimes it comes in a curve. And it sometimes comes with incredible speed. And we're expected to, we're, we're being tested simply. And we have to catch that ball. You know? We have to catch it, we have to stop it. You know? And then throw it back. And of course, Krishna can take catch any ball, you know, for him it's not a problem. But we are meant to actually look at the difficulties of life, the challenges, as a way of Krishna helping us to just become stronger, more robust. And he's testing our stamina. That's all. That's the way to see that. And um, it's, it's not so much that um, when we, we are encountering some difficulty, that it is something we should even aid or avoid. It's just something we should stand up to. I said, okay, Krishna, I know you're trying to tell me something. You know? In the same way that Krishna was trying to help Arjuna when he had to, he was faced with a, like the ultimate difficulty. You know? And he had to overcome it. Uh, when we are tested, it's an opportunity for us to communicate, opportunity for us to pray. That's all. Yeah. And uh, I was actually talking to a god brother yesterday. And uh, he was uh, a little bit uh, down, a little frustrated. He had so many things he had to do. And I just said, listen, why don't you just relax, you know? And I'll say a little prayer for you. In fact, I sang a song for him. I say a little prayer for you forever and ever. And I, I, I was trying to ask him, because he's a musician, do you remember how the lyrics go? Uh, something about waking up, and I put on my makeup. But I said, listen, Peru, we change everything around just a little bit. In the morning when I wake up, I put on my tea lock. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so then he had a good laugh. Thanks for that, Mara. <laughs> so the thing is that, uh, you know, when difficulties arise, then it gives us an opportunity to go for lightness. Lightness, okay? So, um, I, you know, when I was young, before I became a devotee, I used to listen to W.C. Fields quite a bit. And he was a comedian, popular in the late 30s, 40s. And so. Does anybody know him? He used to drink a lot, you know. He had a red nose, and, but he was quite witty. And, uh, and this is in, in relation to Christmas. Uh, he said, ah, oh, yes, Christmas. Yeah, we start early. We start at Christmas early. We have a few drinks before everyone else does. And while everyone is seeing one Santa Claus, we're seeing six or seven Santa Claus. <laughs> so we're luckier than everybody else. <laughs> you know, so there has to be lightness in our life. And Srila Prabhupada, you know, if you read anything about Prabhupada, any of, any of the books, the Liram Rita, uh, Swami in a Strange Land, um, you know, 
Shamasundar's book, Chasing the Rhinos. Anybody has written, Guru Das has written about Prabhupada. And uh, you can see that their experience in the early days is that there was an incredible amount of lightness that he projected from his personality. Because, what's that? Was somebody trying to escape the person? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, he, uh, you know, we see pictures of his gravity where he's very grave and serious, you know. And he would even instruct some of the devices, I want that picture to be my signature picture, you know. And it's kind of, it looks kind of super serious, almost scary. <laughs> but then we have those pictures which show, illustrate Prabhupada's lightness and brightness. And there's pictures where he's going like this, his eyeballs bulging out. And he's speaking very excitedly, you know, like a little kid in a candy shop. And uh, in the early days when he was in, in New York uh, giving a series of talks, he actually did display that kind of, you know, high energy, you know, excitement. And, uh, and he was excited. He just saw all these new recruits. It was so, like yesterday also, um, instead of a church, we were invited to a cafe. Grand Cafe on 108 Avenue in downtown Edmonton. And the place filled up. It was so nice. These are like practically all new people and the kind of people that go for coffee. And the, the guy there, the owner, Fadi was his name, he's from Lebanon. He had this amazing uh, coffee percolator made of copper. And it was like this, like a deity. When I was there, I thought, should I, Fadi, should I offer my <laughs> it's so incredible. And it makes noise periodically when you use it. Yeah, so um, it was just so nice to be able to talk to a new set of people. You know? And of course we talked about our walking experiences because I find that that works. You have to get a little bit to, you know, um, a secular, start with secularly. And then gradually you can bring people more to a spiritual platform. Start on the property level and then come to the Brahman level with them, you know? And it, it just, it basically works. So that by the time you've gone through those two levels, then they're okay for chanting Hare Krishna, you know? And they were clapping just like you were clapping a few minutes ago. And they are not even, they're not familiar with this. Yeah? There was one man there who said, I was raised near, near Yorkton on a farm. I was raised in a farm. And I value those days very much when I was a kid growing up. Another woman, she said, Swamiji, I agree with you. I don't use a car. I just walk everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then I went to another couple and said, you know, I had a car recently and I sold it and I have no regrets. Mm -hmm. I just walk everywhere. <laughs> so we're, uh, well, our message always is, let's simplify. Let's not make it so complicated. And when somebody talks to me about Black Friday and things like that, I say, what is that? That creeped up, you know, over through the border, from south of the border, the Black Friday. And, oh, it's another one of those greed programs. Is that what you're talking about? So, uh, yeah, some or other, my little thingy here is doing something. We need to buy a new one from Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Boxing Day. Okay, so you have Christmas, you know, it's coming up. And everyone's giving, most people go in debt. And then, you know, which is a, you know, and that's why they drink so much, you know, to overcome that. And then they see six or seven Santa Clauses. <laughs> <clears throat> so they, it's, it's, it, it, Christmas is all about like it's a day of sacrifice, you know. You're supposed to remember Jesus, you know, who's a guru in their lineage, you know, and uh, and it's about giving again, giving. And uh, when I was a kid growing up in the Christian background, we had the little nativity scene, and there was baby Jesus, there was Mary, and there was Joseph, and then there were three dark dudes, you know, with a beard, and they looked like they were kings. They came, they look Indian, so they're not African. They don't have the African lips. They're Indians, they're Indians. And I was trying to understand the link. So apparently three kings of Orient or, you know, from East 
came over and they followed a star. They understood, you know, some great avatar has come, you know. And so it was a, Christmas is a, supposed to be a time of giving. So everyone's into giving, but the giving isn't very real. It's not genuine, because if you go into debt as a result of giving, it's not really, the, it's not genuine, you know. Really, it's better to do the old style. Get a, get a sock, put some candy in there, nail it to the mantelpiece of the one fireplace, and that's it. You might actually have a better Christmas. So after all this sacrificial stuff, ritual, you know, uh, and then they have Boxing Day. And that's all about, well, forget the sacrifice, forget the holy stuff. We're just going to go greedily in and, and buy all these things, you know. And it's just like, a, it's a gimmick, you know. It's a gimmick. And, and, you know, the sad thing is that everyone falls for it. And everyone's buying things. Costco. <laughs> I was going to buy $50 worth of things. I came out with a cart, $500 worth of things. <laughs> so, you can talk to one of those people and say, you got nabbed, na 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 na. Maya got you at a, a you know, stranglehold. You know, so that's really what it is. You know, we didn't control our people don't control their senses, they don't control their spending. You know, so do you need it? Well, <laughs> it was on sale. <laughs> It's a good deal. See, I, you know what you're talking, what we're talking about, because we're all guilty. You don't need these things. You know, in fact, we have so many things. We shouldn't be really in the mode of giving again. It's all about give, 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 give. And um, that's uh, that's more or less the message uh, about giving and using the natural elements and items that that the forest may have to offer. And you're just outside your door, you, there's er, uh, herbs that are there that can, can be utilized in, in some kind of sacrifice. The chant comes automatically, it's on your tongue. And Prabhupada explains it so nicely. You know, it's God and his internal potency dancing on the tip of your tongue. So next time when you're chanting Hare Krishna and your upper and lower lips are moving as well as the tongue, then you can think of it in terms of Radha and Krishna dancing on my tongue. Wow, that's great. That's the best musical <laughs> dance, you know, segment ever been offered in the world. So um, we uh, this this chapter really it's called the Conf confidential knowledge and offers so many so much information about about the self and our connection with the absolute with with Krishna. Uh, to give you an example, Arjun, Krishna says, I give heat, and I give rain, and I give immortality, and I also give death. I'm death personified. Both the spirit and matter come from me. There's several verses in the Bhagavad Gita that says that. That means anything that is material, anything spiritual, that's coming from the Lord. Um, <clears throat> those who uh, go to heavenly planets to drink the Soma Rasa, uh, they also see me through that. Uh, they take birth in pious families. This really is a chapter that has much to do with sacrifices. And it basically goes on and on and on. And sacrifice is much about giving and also forgiving. Okay? Forgiving is perhaps even more forward than giving. So what does it mean to forgive? Chanakya Pandit, he said that, uh, he was talking about a Brahmin, like a spiritual person is one who forgives and forgets. You know? And he was saying that is the beauty of a spiritual person. He said the beauty of a cuckoo bird is in its sound. Right? Uh, the beauty of an intelligent person is the words that come from that person's mouth. And he also said, the beauty of a spiritual person is in one who is able to forgive and forget, right? 
So many of us, we bear grudges, you know. It says, I'm not talking to him anymore. <laughs> he did this. And they talk like, these are grown people. And they, mm, 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 you know. <laughs> he said this to me. Or he didn't say anything to me. He didn't say anything to me. So therefore, I'm not going to talk to him. So we have all kinds of, you know, let's say, dark sides to ourselves, you know. And um, if somebody, if you have two people, they bear grudges against each other, then who's really winning in the game of, there's no game of give and take anymore. It's just like, you know, just, you know, sometimes we have these, uh, you know, bucks, like reindeer, or, you know, the, the, the bucks, they come and they, they have this battle, and it's, uh, to get the females and, and to continue the lineage and have lots of children. And they fight for supremacy. And sometimes they just get locked. Their racks or their horns get stuck in them. And they can't get loose. And they end up dying. You know? So is that what you want to be? Like you want to be a buck? Stuck? <laughs> stuck buck? <laughs> and... Uh, and then lose your life opportunities to live and survive and so on like that. So stalemates don't really work very well. It's like freezing. One time Prabhupada was in Europe and he was walking with the devotees and he had, had a cane. You know? And when he was walking, there was like a little film of ice on the puddles. After a rain, it, got, it was freezing. It was just a little over freezing. And he took his stick and he was just kind of putting cracks in, in all the... Uh, in a, on the ice, the film of, of ice. And devotees were always, especially in the early days, they were wondering, Prabhupada, can you tell these, us the significance <laughs> of putting your cane through the ice? And then Prabhupada's explanation was um, that water is meant to flow, and just the living entity is meant to serve to engage in seva. So we try to do whatever we can, we can to get things back into their constitutional position. Prabhupada used that word constitution an awful lot. So that's the idea. Now, I know that it's, Calgary is a city that has lots of potholes, has lots of ice. So if you see anybody down the trail that is putting cracks on every puddle. You know, probably they came from this evening's program. <laughs> I want to be like Prabhupada's. <laughs> so, so the idea is that um, we definitely uh, uh, try to follow the great Mahajanil Yenakata Sampanta. Yudhishthira Maharaj was saying, let's follow the great, follow, follow in the footsteps of the great personalities. And, um, do that as much as we, we can. And, um, you know, since there are, there's regular fresh snow coming down, it's always interesting that I find that winter is a very magical time. Because when you walk and you go through the fresh snow and you see tracks, huh, there's one of those rabbits. Those, one of those big rabbits, I can tell by the Oh, a raccoon came through here. Oh, that was one of those little mices, you know, beat mices to pieces, whatever, came through here, you know. And he said, oh, there's somebody's dog, and he left some yellow, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, on this canvas of white snow, we can see, detect so many things, you know. So every season has its magic, every season, you know. And the fall is especially nice because there's no bugs when you go in the bush, isn't it? How many people like mosquitoes? No? Anybody? Not one person. You're too judgmental, that's why. <laughs> but mosquitoes are a blessing in disguise because they're put here to help us to understand that this is not Vaikuntha. This is a place of happiness and misery, you know. And they are food for certain animals, you know. But we don't want to be that food. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the reality of it all. Uh, so whenever we're faced with some kind of adversity, 
some kind of difficulty. It's simply an opportunity to advance in Krishna consciousness. And again, when I met the devotees first, I saw a picture of Prabhupada, and I said, and they were saying, we can't wait till we get to his age. And I thought, what are you talking about? You want to be old? You know, it was a picture of Prabhupada with wrinkles and little hairs coming out of his ears and big smile, of course, you know, graying, little, you know, coming through, getting shaved in a few days on the head. So the devotees were saying, we can't wait till we get to his age. I was much, can you please explain this to me? No, I, I don't want to be old. I said, well, when we get to that age, we may be, you know, come to a point of advancement. I thought, advancement? What do you mean, advance? Advance is like somebody gives you some cash before you, you know, I'll give you an advance, you know. You, you didn't earn it just yet, but I'll give you an advance because you need it right now. Or, and advance is used in many other terms. So devotees use this word advancement in, in the sense, in the context of progress being made, spiritual progress. So, oh, wow, you can actually make progress spiritually. And so the devotees explain this is what happens, you know, when you exercise Krishna consciousness, when you put it into the world of action. You know? When you apply yourself, advancement is to be made. Progress is to be made. Yes. Yeah. And in the right company. You know? And when we approach everything in the right mood. Patram pushpam plomtuyam yomi bhaktiya prayatiti tadaham bhaktiya paritam ashnami prayatatmana That means that when you give Again, that word give, it comes all, it's all over the place. You give a leaf, flower, fruit, or water, a herb, right? ghee, whatever, and you do it with love, then there's an acceptance from Krishna's side. And then we receive some level of purification. When Krishna's pleased, we get some kind of purification. And so that's what we're doing. That's what it's all about. Apart from the good food, I mean, we don't come here just for the food, right? I just want to correct. <laughs> we don't. We come here for other reasons. We come for a sense of community. That's a bigger thing. A uh, sense of it's all week long. It's just a run, a grind in the grind, like some engine, and it, it seems like you never stop. And you come here, huh, I'm stopping. Or I think, at least I thought it was stopping. Then the Swami tells us to jump up and down and <laughs> <laughs> dance all over the place. <laughs> so, but it's a, we don't mind that, right? We don't the joy of it all. We get a chance to just be happy. You know? And Prabhupada said, "Chant and be happy." Happy chappies. <clears throat> Um, so what time are we supposed to be uh, concluding this? Um, what uh, can somebody give me some? Pardon me. Five more minutes. Okay. So this is the verse that you chose, and um, so uh, we got some enlightenment from it. Um, as was mentioned earlier on, this is the month of. Uh, when we can share and we can give. And we call this Shastradhan. That means gift of knowledge, uh, which we uh, we have an opportunity in our community uh, to share the wisdom of Krishna. And we're very proud of our book, Bhagavad Gita, is it not? Mm -hmm. There's such depth there. It's rich. We're proud of it. Uh, the contents. And uh, when you go through, when you read through it, you'll actually have some kind of feeling, I've gone through this before, but I don't remember all these details. That's how deep it is. When people, when people go, they do deep sea diving, and they go deep into the ocean, and say, oh my God, I found a whole bunch of fish that were never even discovered before. 
So it's like going deep into the ocean with the Gita. And um, we're very proud of the contents, the wisdom, and we like to share that with other people. So already it is a time of giving. People are in that mood. And we have this opportunity to, to share uh, Krishna consciousness and the, give the rich depth of the wisdom that is contained therein. So in Canada, we like to really uh, promote this program of Shastradam and where books, Bhagavad Gita's can be sponsored. I know that when Janardhan Maharaj was here last week or the week before, 24 boxes of Bhagavad Gita's were sponsored. And uh, I know some of you came forward and some of you did not. <laughs> but those who did not now have the opportunity to do. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, I mean, we didn't rehearse any, we didn't really talk about this formally, but. It is something you could do this Sunday or next Sunday, but better late, better, no, better, I was going to say better late than never. No, better now than any other time. <laughs> and as the saying goes, if you can't be on time, at least be early. You heard that saying before? Like in our culture, we're not very good at being on time. For work, yes. For business, yes. Spirituality, mm -hmm. Okay, so the opportunity is on. Many, many great souls all over the world are, you know, taking this opportunity. There are a lot of people that don't even have a real Christmas. They can't even make a snowman. I was driving through some of the streets. I was the passenger, by the way. In, <laughs> in Miami, and there was somebody that had a big plastic snowman on their green lawn. And I was just thinking, are you kidding me? <laughs> Why don't you make a grass man? That will make, make more sense. But there are people that don't. Snow is a reminder of this season of giving. And some places they don't have that reminder. They just are excited because the other people in other parts of the world do have snow. And they just firmly believe in Santa Claus, and they think Santa Claus should be distributing the Bhagavad Gita as it is. That's what he should have in his bag. And his bag should be so full of it that he can't get down the chimney. <laughs> so anyways, we all have an opportunity to be Santa. And we were talking about six or seven Santas, but we got more than that here. <laughs> so you, this is a great opportunity to share this great thing. And um, you know, when I first started to look at this book, I think, wow, this is rich, this is rich. And I was a little stunned because in the first chapter, it's got all these long names with so many, you know, uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, no, no, no. Do, 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 do. What am I thinking about? I'm aging. Syllables. Syllables. No. Syllables. Yeah. So many syllables. And uh, who are they? Who are they? I couldn't understand it. So then I okay, got over to chapter one. And then into chapter two. Oh, here's the meat. Here's the sauce. Here's the the flesh. The flesh of the book, the message. You know? Somebody's in distress and the <coughs> the solution is being offered. Advice is being given. So it, it's good. And then you get you go on with this, um, roll on with this wisdom. And then when you get to chapter 11, whoa. Woo, what's chapter 11 all about? The Svira, the Rup, whoa. This, you know, all these images of the Lord and <coughs> that, that uh, create the awe in the mind of Arjuna. And then later, it terrorizes him. Um, visually, it's very powerful. So anyways, that's what I want to say. We want to wish you the very best in your endeavors in the month of December. And uh, you do have a chance to do some seva to give. So I'll leave it on that note. And if anybody wants to uh, sequel, you know, 
say something more? I see some books there. <laughs> They're trying to come at me. <laughs>